Students extend their understanding of addition and subtraction when they are given opportunities to apply these operations to a variety of word problem types. By being given experiences with a variety of problem types, they attach meaning to the operations and develop increasingly sophisticated approaches to problem solving. This video explains a common classification for word problems based on the book Children's Mathematics. As you watch this video, think about the problem types, textbooks, and other math resources tend to present. Which of the problem types from this video are most evident in those resources? Which are least evident? This chart depicts the different problem types. The categories of problems are listed down the left-hand side. Each category is further broken down based on the location of the unknown or the amount we are solving for. The first categories we will look at are the add to and take from problems. These are action problems. This means the story has one amount that's being acted on. We have that starting amount. A change occurs, either something is added to it or taken from it, which leads to our result. Each problem either has an unknown start, unknown change, or unknown result. For the most part, these problems are easy to act out. Let's take a look at a couple examples. After I read each problem, pause the video to think. Is this an add to or take from problem? Which part of the problem is unknown? The result, the change, or the start? Two cats are in the park. Two more cats come to the park. How many cats are in the park now? Well, we know the starting amount is two. We know the change, two more cats are added to the group. We just don't know the result or ending amount. So this is an add to result unknown problem. Let's take a look at another problem. Six dogs play in the park. Some dogs go home, four dogs were still playing in the park. So how many dogs went home? Well, we know the starting amount is six. We don't know the change or the amount that leaves, but we know the result is four. So this is a take from change unknown problem. As you can see, the problems vary in difficulty depending on the location of the unknown. The next category of problems is called put together take apart. These problems have no action. Nothing is being added to or taken from the set. Instead, we are looking at parts of the whole amount. In these problems, we are examining a part-part-whole relationship. There are really two types of problems here. The first is where the problem provides the parts, and we're finding the whole amount. The second is where the problem provi provides the whole amount, and we must either find one or both of the parts. Although these problems do not involve an action, they may still typically be modeled with manipulatives. Let's take a look at an example of a put-together take-apart problem. Four ducks swim in the pond. One is white, the rest are yellow. How many ducks are yellow? Well, we know the total amount of ducks in the pond. We know one part, or addend, is white. We are looking for the other part. So this is an addend unknown problem. Let's take a look at another problem. Six birds fly to the park. They could either land in a tree or on the grass. How many birds could be in a tree and how many could be in the grass? Now we know the total amount, but we don't know either part. This is a both add-ins and known problem. Our previous problem types involved one whole set. With the add to take from problems, we had a starting amount. The amount was changed, which led to our result. In the put together take apart problems, we had one whole amount and we were looking at its parts. Compare problems are different. These are the only type of problems in addition and subtraction where we are looking at two distinct sets which are not parts of the same whole. Here, we are comparing the sets to determine how many more or how many less one set has than another. Here is an example of a compare problem. Fred is 71 inches tall. Barney is 62 inches tall. How many inches shorter is Barney than Fred? We know the height of both people, but we don't know the difference. So this is a compare problem where the difference is unknown. Since the problem is asking how much shorter Barney is than Fred, it's, it's a how many less type of question. Let's take a look at another compare problem. Fred's bowling average is five points higher than Barney's. Barney's bowling average is 189. What is Fred's average? Well, we know Barney's bowling average. We also know the difference between the two averages, but we do not know Fred's actual bowling average. So this is a compare problem where the bigger is unknown. Please note the grades in the bottom right corner of each problem type. NCDPI has indicated which problem types should be mastered by each grade level based on their difficulty. 
As you introduce increasingly difficult problems to your students, be sure to start with small quantities. Then, students will be more likely to solve similar problems with larger quantities.